Natty for Rocks, Jay-Z once again, backstage at Rockfest 2024. It's the Dirty 30, and it's the final day of Rockfest, and I've got a couple of awesome rock stars sitting with me. I've got, once again, Aaron, and I've got Valentino from the band of Mice and Men. They're playing on the Who's on Top stage tonight. First of all, guys, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, how are you guys doing? And uh, let's talk about Wisconsin. I'm sure you've played Wisconsin a few times before, haven't you, Aaron? Yeah, we're doing very well. We're super happy to be here. Uh, we've been scheduled to play this uh, festival a couple times, and for reasons out of our control, we haven't been able to sort of finally be here to be doing it. The weather's nice. It's just time to rock. Absolutely. And Valentino, of course, uh, you guys know how to rock. You've been rocking uh, for just a few years, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely, man. Over a decade. It's crazy. Hard to believe it's been that long already, isn't it? Time flies when you're having fun, man. It's it's the age-old adage, but, uh, you know, we're here, we're ready to rock, and we're excited. Let's talk about uh, your band a little bit. Obviously, you've gone through a few changes here and there. But I think you guys have kind of been set now for a while, Aaron. Would you agree on that? Yeah, basically since the end of 2016, um, it's been the four of us just rocking as a unit. I came on board in 2012. The band started in 2009, so I came on a little bit later. And then, but yeah, since about 20 end of 2016, we've been just writing records, touring, just going strong. You know, I got to ask you because obviously you weren't singing at the time, at least with the Mice and Men, but now you've taken over that role, I guess. Talk about that transition a little bit. Well, I used to sing and play bass. Right. So I sang a lot of the choruses and stuff, didn't really do a lot of the screaming. But the in my old band before uh, of Mice and Men, I used to do both. So kind of transitioning to both was, was a, a half muscle memory and then half just sort of relearning better technique than what I used to know. So, Valentina, I know you're a drummer. Did you sing ever or just all drums? <laughs> no, nah, just drums, man. Um, <laughs> uh, see, Aaron said he's give already putting it under the bus. Yeah, give me enough Jameson and I'll, I'll sing my heart out, you know? <laughs> okay, so, Aaron, let's hear this then. What uh, what does he sing very well or what would you uh, say his voice sounds like? Oh, Seal. <laughs> seal, Kiss from seal Rose. Dude, yeah. Favorite artist for sure. Baby! Oh, you got to hear him when he hits that, dude. And he won't do it very often, but when he does it, it's just like, oh, chef's kiss perfect. <laughs> Talk about your fans a little bit. Obviously, uh, you're a band, like you said, you've been around for a little bit, Valentino. You've kind of been here since day number one of this whole mm-hmm. project and that. Talk about the fans of, of Mice and Men. You know, really, we, we, we're we here because of them, honestly. Um, we're musicians uh, at, at the beginning and end of the day, and... Uh, fans of music as well so we've always kind of felt like it's important to have a authentic and honest connection with those fans because we grew up being those fans for our favorite bands and continue to do that too and thankfully with opportunities like this at festivals we get to crazily enough call them peers you know and get to do this together with them and uh, it's very important for us to really um especially in the live performances, cater towards those fans and make sure that they're not only feeling taken care of, but feel safe at our shows and that they honestly just have a good time. And so without them, we couldn't be doing this. And uh, they've really given this band a life that we never thought possible and given us as musicians and as human beings a life that we only ever dreamed of, you know? Like we never thought, we never did this to like, sell records or do anything like that like we just wanted to play live and have some sort of synergetic connection with our audience and um and it's because of them coming out to these shows and whether they're new fans that have just recently heard of us or are just seeing us for the very first time to the ones that have been with us since day one you know it's important for us to uh, you know give them the honest representation of what our band is and and the music we write is about the human experience and for us, you know, uh, music is kind of like a, a therapy, if you will. It's not, it's not science, <laughs> right. but uh, in, in actuality, it's something that us as fans of music, we need the music just as much as our audience does. And so we keep that very near and dear to our hearts. And are, we're always thinking of our fans and making sure they're all right and, and uh, hoping that they have a great experience when they come see us live or when they listen to our records or when they wear our t-shirts or anything like that you know 
Say, so, let me ask you, what to you, I guess, first of all, is success to you? What does this band really think is success? And then I guess maybe a two-part question to that is, when did you start to see that success? Or when did you start to really see that, you know what, we've got something here with this band. And there was that one moment that finally maybe pushed us over the edge, Aaron. Um, that's really hard to say. I feel like anytime we set out to create something honest and we work diligently and hard at it in terms of music or art or music videos, just things like that, that if we communicate, because you know, the, 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 the age old cliche is music is the universal language. It's like, if we really communicate and if you, if you metaphorically choose your words very carefully and your intent and emotions very carefully in the form of music, and then that can resonate with an audience that can hear their story by us sharing ours, then everybody gets to sort of heal together, you know? Because most of what rock music and metal music is, is not, it's not all the happy stuff. It's like a lot of times we sort of explore the, what it, like the darker sides of, of humanity and emotions and things like that. So it's, it's, um, and we don't really talk about it a lot in like Western society, you know, or just as much as human beings anywhere. So it's like, I think um, just being able to create something honestly and then have that resonate with the audience. When you can see somebody in the audience singing the song back at you and you see yourself out there, that's success. Yeah. That's very, it. Very cool. Very cool. Rock radio. Let's talk about it a little bit. We're a rock station. We've been spinning up Mice and Men. I know you get some airplay, but obviously, you know, you're a band that you're true to what you guys do. You're not going to cater to anybody. You're going to play what you want to do and who you want to be. Rock radio is starting to embrace, I believe, the heavier bands. You're seeing that out there. Is that excite you, Valentino? Hell yeah, absolutely, man. Like, we love it. Growing up, you know, this is the music that really connected with us. And um, I, I say it's in my DNA, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's in, we live and breathe this music. And it's so cool to see so many bands getting that love, seeing so much love for heavy music. We've been around, I mean, we've been playing music for pretty much our whole adult lives and uh, into when we were teenagers and even, you know, just growing up. And so to be able to see the, the different waves of heavy music happen in our lifetime is super awesome. And now to be a part of it is something really cool. And having radio stations such as yourselves, you know, that support these bands and give this music to the masses where we don't necessarily have the access to come out to Wisconsin all the time. But to know that our music's being spun on the radio and that fans are listening and calling in and requesting, calling in and request of Mice and Men, calling in and request of Mice and Men, that, um, you know, it gives us the opportunity to be able to come out and play these awesome festivals. And uh, we always say, you know, a rising tide raises all ships. So if it's not of Mice and Men and it's another heavy band, you know, that's awesome too because it's part of a culture, you know, we're part of a community. We, we all need each other out here and we all rely on each other to have a good time and to be able to express ourselves in ways outside of your normal mundane life every day and to have things like this and have radio stations that you can turn on and know that you're going to hear some jams and you want to do it. You know, I listen to rock radio in my car all the time and I love hearing our band. I love hearing other bands. You know, it's, it's all, it, it all kind of works together. And so it's just awesome to be involved in that. And, you know, we will never stop, you know, it's, it's cool for us. And we get really excited when we hear our song on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you remember the first time you ever heard your song on the radio? Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty cool experience. You know, it's again, we, we're just musicians. So for us to be able to do this, like, we just we never thought a band a metalcore band that plays breakdowns could ever be on a radio station because we didn't grow up listening to our style of music on the radio we had to search through liner notes to find bands and we had to go on mp3.com and go on myspace and go on pure volume and all these other websites and now to have it be more easily accessible where you could just get in your car and turn on the radio and hear some kick-ass tunes you know like it's just something that's really cool to be a part of. And, um, yeah, like I said, you know, the first time we heard it, we were like, oh, my God, this is so crazy. I can't believe they're playing it, you know. And and um, it's just something that we're going to continue to do. And we're going to keep writing music and keep putting out albums. And it's because we love it, you know, and it's for the fans, really. And, uh, and, and a little bit for us, you know, we're a little selfish with that. We love making music. We love going on tour. We love being able to, to play for our audience everywhere in the world. So... We're going to just keep that cracking. 
Awesome. Let me ask you that. Now, you got me jumped in there all excited about what <laughs> maybe is new on the horizon for this band and that. I mean, uh, obviously, the energy is there with this band. So where are we taking the energy next to? So we have, uh, we have this festival. We play another show tomorrow. We have a little bit of time off. We have two more shows, and then that's basically it for the rest of the year. We're going to hide away and make a new record. Okay. And then so, we'll be, and then once that's done, then we'll be back out next year. So, hopefully, 2025, we might see uh, a new album from Of Mice and oh, Men. I wouldn't say hopefully. I'd say almost definitely. Okay. So, how do you feel about the industry as a whole today, and uh, maybe moving forward? You feel obviously we just talked with Valentino, and he's excited about this. I think rock radio is embracing this kind of music, which you know should have been there for years. I mean, we. Way back in the day, I know that, you know, Rob Helford tried to push it through and all that. You'd get a few of those, but now we're seeing that more. What's it for you guys? I'm really excited, and I think we're really excited to see how, like what Tina was saying earlier, the um, the, the community and culture it's, is really being embraced by radio and being embraced by um, music media in general. And so... Uh, with streaming services and with the internet, music is arguably easier to find than ever. And at the same time, there's so much of it that it's sort of harder to cultivate through, which that's always been what radio's been for, you know? So I think that it's, um, I'm just excited. I'm excited to see what's next. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Got to ask this question. You guys have been around for a while. What haven't you done yet that you guys want to do? I mean, there's got to be something yet in your minds that you've been thinking, you know, we've been a band for, you know, 10, 15, 60, we've been playing all our lives, but we've yet to do that yet, and maybe this is the time to do it, Valentino. What is that thing? We want to play in space. No, it's just kidding. I don't know. Uh, um, I don't know, man. We've been so privileged to be able to do so many cool things, you know, like just festivals all over the world and uh, being able to record with some of the sickest um, record producers like in modern rock and I don't know man I, it's it's hard to say like we just want to keep doing what we do man like we love festivals we love headlining we love supporting we love going on tour we love making albums like I don't really know what it what it could be that you know that that we could do different or do that we haven't done maybe travel to some countries that we haven't been to or play in like Alaska or something or Hawaii or um, I don't know, and anywhere really that we that we haven't really been. I mean, we've been to a lot of places, but there are some places that, that have been kind of untouched, like what I mentioned. But um, I don't know, man. We just want to play our music for as many people as are willing to come and listen to it. And we're I feel like we're we're a very humble band in that in that aspect because we're like I said, we're just musicians. So being able to do what we'd love to do and do that for an audience is something that's incredibly special for us. So if, if we get to do this, you know, for the rest of our lives, that'll be absolutely amazing. And it's really up to the fans to, to you know, show up and to show out and to buy the records and to listen to the records and to request us on the radio and do all that stuff and show that there's a demand for it. Because as Aaron said, as things get more convoluted with like the Internet and, and with media and stuff like that, uh, a lot of things can get lost in the fold. And so... It kind of always goes back to a little bit when uh, somebody's like, "Don't wear the t- don't wear the band's T-shirt to the concert." Hell yeah, wear the band's T-shirt to the concert. Show the love, show the support. You know what I mean? Like it's so cool. We're like a team out here, you know, and uh, and it can it can be something that's super powerful. So I guess we'll see. You know, t- time will tell. Time will definitely tell. I know you leaned in right away when I asked that question, so you might have something on the tip of your tongue, Aaron. Selfishly. I would love to play a festival on the same day as Tool. Yeah. We've played festivals with Tool, but we've always been on different days. That'd be dope. Have you ever had a chance to hang out with those guys at all or not? Nope. Nope. And I haven't seen them either yet. It's a shame. Oh. So, it's all right. one of my favorite bands in the world, but it's been 20 some odd years of listening to them, and I have just not been able to catch a show yet. Well, we're maybe. getting close, though. We're like, we're, we're zoning in. You know what I mean? So, it's going to happen any day. <laughs> Any day now. Any day now. Well, maybe after they hear this interview, Maynard will call you guys up and say, hey, we should do a tour together. How would you like that, Aaron? 
Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be waiting for your call, MJ. <laughs> I know you guys got to get going here, so we should probably get going too. But I just want to say once again, we appreciate you taking some time out for our listeners to kind of get the, the story of the band a little bit, kind of behind the scenes. Because, you know, everybody sees you on stage, that persona. But when you get back, you strip everybody back. You guys are just some normal dudes, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and that's we, we kind of, you know, getting on stage is, is something where it is a larger than life experience. And so for us, when we get up there, it is a, it is a very exciting and powerful feeling to be there. But like I said, ultimately, man, we're just fans of music and we're musicians that practice our instruments for a very long time before we got to be up here and still do. And the journey of music is endless and we're just happy to be on the, on the, on the path moving forward. Awesome. Can you give me any sneak previews of tonight or anything hints or anything that we might know that we don't know about? You can tell me, even though this will air after the show anyway. I am trying so hard to think of something, but not really. I mean, it's just, it's just going to be a rock show. You know, like what, what, what Tino said is, is really accurate. It's like what we do is we go on stage, I think first and foremost, as music fans. To share music that we've made with people who have allowed it to mean something to them. So when I when I look out in the crowd, I see a bunch of me and I see a bunch of my bandmates, and it's like we're all we're all the same, you know. Like I don't think there's as much of a maybe with our band, there's not as much of a difference between the audience and us and our personas on stage because we just go up as human beings that love music and get to share it, you know. Absolutely, you heard that, fans. The next time you see of mice and men. They're just like you. They're just rocking out in front of you. You can probably rock out later on uh, somewhere else afterwards, right? I've always said that when I get on stage to sing for a show, I'm not performing for the audience, and it's not about me or wowing them or anything. I've always said, like, for myself personally, I'm just leading everybody in song. That's, like, my role. My role is to have the microphone to lead us all in song, but it's not about me or us. It's literally exclusively about them. Awesome. Aaron? Tino, appreciate you guys. Best of uh, luck as uh, that new album comes out in 2025. Have a hell of a show tonight. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to the listeners, too. We really appreciate you all. And hope you guys have an awesome time out here at this festival. And if you didn't make it, there's always next year. That's the boys from Of Mice and Men. This is Jay-Z backstage at Rockfest on 94 Rocks.